Madam Speaker, I rise today to recognize my friend Phil Rowe, representative of Tennessee's first district, as he chooses to end this chapter in his life and return to being a private citizen. On television, many Americans are left with the impression that the U.S. House of Representatives is a place of constant combat. Naturally, over the past two centuries, the House has seen many great debates about the future of our nation. Debate is at the essence about passionately arguing for your preferred course of action. The beauty of the People's House, the reason that former Speaker Nick Longworth described the House as coming nearer to reflecting at all time the popular will than does any other individual or legislative body in this or any other country, is that we debate in earnest, and yet we do so with a premium on civility. But alas, as I say, many Americans are left based on the evening cable entertainment shows with the opposite impression. My experience over the past six years at this chamber is in fact a place where the great issues of the day are debated and where that work and debate friendships are established. Those friendships extend across the aisle, across cultures, and across generations. Over the past six years, I've come to have the greatest respect for one of my colleagues who after 12 years has elected to leave the House and return to that most basic title that we all honor, that of citizen. During the course of these years, I recognize my friend Phil Rowe, representative of Tennessee's first district, as a man of high character, immense intellect, and great loyalty. His loyalty to the people of the Tri-Cities of East Tennessee is shown in his daily spirit. His loyalty, passion, and care for his fellow veterans have overflowed in his role as chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee and currently as ranking member. He has never forgotten his service in the U.S. Army Medical Corps stationed in Korea. He has never forgotten his constituents that enjoy livelihood in the thriving region in and around Johnson City. For three decades prior to coming to Congress, Phil was an OBGYN. He claims, Madam Speaker, that his terrific record of public service and local office, including being mayor of Johnson City, were essential to his preparation for and success in earning a seat in Congress. But we all know better, better, Madam Speaker, we know that simply delivering the vast majority of your constituents is a surefire way to be successfully elected. As a Christian, Phil sets a high standard and is a stalwart in the annual National Prayer Breakfast preparation and our weekly Thursday morning bipartisan fellowship, where he never hesitates to bring his guitar and share his musical talents. There must be something in the water in Bristol, Tennessee, home of country music. It's true that Phil and I bonded over critical national defense policy, accountability and excellence for our veterans, his market-based solutions for more affordable health care for all Americans. But we grew up as scouts, and so our real mutual love is for the outdoors. And to this day, decades later, we share a love of backpacking, camping, and hiking in the mountains. In fact, in 2019, both of us were so excited that Congress passed and President Trump signed into law new national wilderness areas, each in our districts. For me, it was able to add acreage to Flatside Wilderness and commence a formal study of the area. And for Phil, it was adding nearly 20,000 acres of some of the wildest pockets of Cherokee National Forest in East Tennessee to the wilderness system. We both share an amazing affection for that long day at high altitude above the tree line. One evening in Maine, after a delicious dinner, we agreed, hey, let's get up in the morning and go climb the highest mountain on the eastern seaboard and hike the end of the Appalachian Trail. We will climb and retrace the steps of Henry David Thoreau's attempt to climb Mount Katahdin. So sure enough, we were true to our word, and we got up at 3 a.m. and drove from the coast to the trailhead, arriving at 7 a.m. We spent one of the most memorable days on the trail that I can recall. The summit of Mount Katahdin was pea soup, but you can tell from our smiles that the long trek up and down was worth every step. Congressman Rowe, you have fought the good fight, you have kept the faith, and like every good scout, you have left your campsite cleaner than when you found it. Now it's time for a few less crossfires 
and a few more late night campfires. Martha and I wish you and Clarinda, your combined families and your three kids, Whitney, John, David, and their families, many, many happy days on the trail to come. You'll be missed here in the People's House. You'll be missed by your friends. These halls will be a little emptier without your smile, your voice, and your love expressed daily for the people of East Tennessee. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield back.